Good morning. All right, so we're going over the Neodent guided surgery kit today. Uh, here's our manual. This thing is fantastic. Uh, it gives you all the information you need and your specs for the laboratories as well as the doctors. Sometimes they ask some very interesting questions so uh, about things like the sleeves and sizes and such. So we'll do that at the end. All right, this particular guide has regular sleeves that are yellow. And I want to walk through how to use the kit properly. So up in the upper left here is our fixation drill for the facial aspect of the guide. This one doesn't have it because it doesn't need it to help fix or lock the guide into a position. It's a 1.3 drill. And then it has the pins, one, two, three. It's set up top. So this guy bottoms out on the silver edge here on the side of the sleeve if we had one, all right? And then the pins slip in right behind. Okay, in your drilling sequence, we would use the two millimeter twist, three five drill, four three drill. That's all that we need in this kit. This happens to obviously be for the driver album, okay? And we have our spoons to help walk us through. So the spoon at the bottom it has a little less than symbol. It's for the narrow sleeve. Believe it or not, we actually have a, uh, a magenta or purple looking sleeve that's used in narrow or tight spaces only for a 3 5 implant. Sometimes a picture helps greatly with doing that. If the sleeves are too close to one another and we can't fabricate the guide properly, it may help to use a narrow sleeve. Another thing that's really important looking at our sleeves is they have a five millimeter depth. You see that? I'm sorry, four millimeter depth up here as well as um, an inner diameter of five. And they have a one millimeter lip for the labs to know. Other thing that's big is the nine millimeters. Wherever the sleeve is in the guide, the top of the implant is nine millimeters below the top of the sleeve. But when we put our spoons in, which we're gonna do next, we're gonna look at the drills. When we actually take one of the spoons out of the kit to do our drilling sequence, we need to put this, drop this guy in, all right? It adds two millimeters in height, and then we start our drilling sequence. So we just need to look on the side here for whatever our line is, eight, 10, the bottom of that silver bar is 11 and a half, and the top is 13. If we ever forget, we can always go into our kit and we can put one of our drills up next to the kit. I love referencing this thing. So remember, these drills are all a little bit longer, right? Because they're guided, we gotta get them through the sleeve, okay? All right, back to the kit. So after we're done our drilling sequence, we've gone from the two, we go up to the next size, we take the spoon out and actually flip the spoon. This is for the regular sleeve. And now it's got this color code to match the 3-5 drill. All right, and when we're finished back in the kit, we're actually gonna go to the spoon above. Okay, up here. Because this guy matches in yellow the 4-3 and it drops into the spoon. Again, adding two millimeters. We take our drill from here. This guy fits perfectly. There's no stops on these. If I push this thing through and I'm not paying attention, if I'm the doctor doing the procedure, it could go all the way through. All right, so you can get endo stops if you want even from somebody like Salvin. All right, last thing. What are these other spoons for? The one is the for the narrow on the very bottom for that magenta sleeve. But the second one up, if we look at the top of our spoon, it has this weird picture of a, uh, it's a tap actually, it's a bone tap, but you know, I didn't even know honestly what that was at first. So if I can spin this guy over and put the magenta in, there's the three five tap. It's got a little bit of play, but we put our hand piece on the same speed as the implant and slowly spin this guy down about 
It's up to you as a clinician to go maybe halfway. We're to go to the lines on the side of the tap here to prepare that osteotomy a little bit more for the dense bone. Okay? So that's the taps. There's also in this bottom row here, these are plugs. So let's say we've placed our implant and we want to add some additional fixation to lock the guide in place. Once the implant is placed, we've removed the implant driver. You can actually turn this guy down in and this locks into the implant at the bottom and it just helps fix everything in place. Last one, last row here. So on this regular sleeve in yellow, the first driver that I took out of here is the, the regular size. It's a little bit wider and it has these stops. The stops are huge on the side so that as we're placing the implant where the laboratory or the clinician places the implant in their software, two things happen. First one is when the implant's attached and this thing slowly spins down, we want to make sure we reach the same depth. Same depth as where the implant was planned in the, in the uh, software. Second thing is, if we line that dot up to the facial, or if the laboratories mark the guide with a line and we turn the dot to match that, we've also matched the hex. So there's the internal hex of the implant and we can get the same timing. Um, did one of these cases with a doctor and we were done in just over 15 minutes doing two centrals because we had the depth at eight and nine and we also had the timing and the laboratories made a provisional ahead of time that matched right up and it was a screw retained. So if our sleeve was magenta, there's a, a more narrow uh, implant driver. So it'll still fit the implants no matter what, but this one would pass through because this is a regular size sleeve, okay? Last thing, if you remember when we saw these in the conventional drills, you have a latch type and you have the um, square head that fits the torque wrench to literally do your bone taps, okay? But one other thing about these guys that's critical, uh, this little guy with the square head, also, when we go to manually adjust the implant, we literally take this guy that has a hole through the top, everybody can see that, and we can slide this down over top. That's a big deal. I actually ask a lot of my clinicians to start the implant. They grab it from the packaging, and I have them start it by hand here so that they turn this thing and they let the implant just feed itself into the osteotomy or begin and then slide the wrench over top so that they can hand ratchet the rest of the way. The problem is, if this guy's on a hand piece and they place their implant in, now that the implant is locked into the osteotomy and we have a hand piece connected to the top, it's very difficult to hold this with some type of tool and remove the hand piece, take the hand piece off of the top right without disengaging the driver from the implant which is down through the guide and down in the osteotomy already so what I, again what I like to do is take this adapter piece I ask the clinicians to put the two together grab the implant by hand and simply turn this till they get it started right and then put the wrench on top and ratchet the rest of the way down and once we butt up to the top of this, we want to line our dot up to wherever it's suggested by the lab. All right, spend a couple extra time, or a little bit extra time on that. I was going to say a couple minutes. And then, of course, we have our blue driver. It's already in the kit. It fits the top of our plugs, okay, to twist those down in. And uh, our cover screw, our healing abutment. So that's it. I want to make sure everybody knew about the manual. You can get all your good information in here. Uh, further specifications about the the different sleeves so I call these sleeves okay call those guys the sleeves and then over here we have our spoons or handles that we use for the guides okay